Hi guys, this is Katie here and I'm going to do a super easy to follow beginner's guide to body moving as it's really lacking on the internet. This is what I'm going to cover, what to do, what not to do, downloading, installing, exporting and cleaning up your file structure. So this is what I've got. I've got my awesome website to Davy Bowie, my front cover page and I'm going to export it to my browser using body moving from the After Effects. So the first step is downloading and installing body moving. So I use GitHub, um, I really like it. You can use Adobe, but GitHub was better. Um, and you just can copy that URL there. And um, just download the zip file. And I used option three. I really thought it was easy to follow and it was just really great. Um, what you have to do is you have to download this um, AX, ZXP installer over there and you can just um, download for Mac or Windows. Then once you've installed it, um, you can um, find your ZXP file and in the body moving folder that you downloaded and it'll be under build and extension. Okay, and then once you find that you just drag it into the ZXP installer and it just downloads it for you and installs it. It's flipping amazing. So this is what you can and can't do with body moving. I really suggest you pause this video and read it really carefully or yeah, your life will be shit. Um, so next we're going to export for um, from After Effects. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your file, you're going to go window and then you're going to go to um, extensions and find your body moving file. If it's not there, try reinstall. Um, once you've got your body moving file, you're going to uh, make sure that it's the file that you want to export is selected. Right, and then um, you're going to go to your settings. Now there's a whole bunch of different settings. So um, the first um, setting is split, and what it does is it splits your animation to your specified time frames. So let's say 10 seconds. This is really cool because then what you can do is link it to a click or scroll, and then your animation won't continue until the person clicks or scrolls. The next one is glyphs, and if you have text or font in your animation, you have to use this because what it does, it exports it to a shape layer, and then you don't have to, um, and then you don't have to link a font file later. This next one um, is hidden, and what it does is it um, exports all hidden layers that have got expressions pointing to it. Um, so it's really great if you're alpha matting or something like that. The one after that is guides, and it also will um, export guide layers that's got expressions pointing to it. So the one after that is extra comps. So if you've got expressions pointing to um, comps that are out external or outside of your main comp, then you can um, export it. I wouldn't recommend you click any of these um, unless you really, really need to, because um, it obviously exports more um, layers and files and uh, so then your file will be bigger than um, it needs to. The one after that is original asset names and what it will do is they will export your images that you use in your um, comps um, into an, a, a sourced folder um, so it will link it in it's really great. And the one after that is a standalone and so if you um, changing between computers or you need to give the files to someone, it can bundle all your files up into a single file so it's easy to transport. The, the one we're going to be using which is my favorite is a demo and what it does and it exports it so you can preview it immediately in your browser. This is great um, to check if there's um, things going wrong in your animation, if it's not exporting properly um, and you don't get confused whether it's a coding problem or exporting problem. I recommend it as a beginner because you can see your files immediately. The one after that is AVD. You don't have to worry about it as this is a beginner tutorial um, and this is for Androids. So we're going to save that setting. Then we're going to click over here and we're going to make a folder. If you haven't really, I've already got a folder on my desktop where we're going to save our files to. Um, then you're going to go to the render button and you're going to render the HTML file to that folder. Then you're going to get the player. Um, don't get the gzip to get the player and just save it in the same folder as the others. And that's basically it. You have exported your file. So now I'm going to open up in my browser just to see how it looks and see if there's any glitches that are happening. Um, and it looks absolutely fine, which is great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to um, clean it up, get the file structure going and read the files. What you're going to do is you're going to open it in Dreamweaver. And as you take a look at the coding, your brain is probably going to play this theme song. What you're going to see here is you're going to see a bunch of um, CSS and JavaScript in your HTML file. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and separate it and make it look a little bit more manageable so we can actually work with this file. So the first thing we're going to do is get our file structures right. We're going to make a new folder and we're going to name it JS for JavaScript. Okay. And then we're going to make a CSS folder. What we're then going to do is take the body moving um, JavaScript and the data.json file and put them in the um, JS folder. The CSS should be still empty. 
So next we're going to jump back into Dreamweaver and we're just going to clean up and declutter the HTML file so it's easier to manage and edit. Um, so the first thing we're going to target is the CSS and we're going to go File, New and we're going to collect a new CSS file. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to save it and we're going to name it as Style Sheet. Okay, once we've named it as Style Sheet, we're going to save it into the CSS folder we made earlier. Once we've done that, we're going to highlight and cut um, the CSS out of the HTML and paste it into the uh, document. Get rid of the style tags because you don't actually need them because it's no longer an HTML document and um, yeah, it knows it's a style sheet. Um, and then clean up your code. Once you've done that, hop back into HTML. And then now you're going to link your C external C CSS sheet and, um, by using the link tags. Also put in type as, um, as, and stating what kind of document it is and where it's going to find it in this link tag. Um, and don't forget to close the link tag. Remember the link tag is self-closing. So now we're going to tackle this embedded JavaScript, um, which is actually um, the body moving um, file that we saved into our JS folder. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to delete it and then relink that body moving JS file. So you're going to click at the top of the JavaScript. And what you can do is you can scroll all the way down to where there's a break in the JavaScript, click at the end and then delete. So there, click at the end before the div and then delete it. So um, we're going to link now the body moving JS file using the script tag because that's what you use for JavaScript. You go script source and then JS. Remember, if you don't see the um, things popping up, then options popping up, then it is um, not linking properly. Remember, script tags are not self-closing like link tags, so uh, remember to finish it. So now we're going to move on this part, and this is our JSON file, and it's actually our animation if you look at all the points and stuff, which is really, really cool, but it's just not welcome here um, in our HTML file. We'd much rather link it externally. So what you're going to do is you're going to do the same thing, click in the beginning, click at the end of the file, watch out for that. You do not want to just go by the semicolon, don't delete that other little paragraph, and delete it. Feel the pleasure, people. It is gone. Gone forever. Um, then what you're going to do is um, you, oh, just watch out for the script tag. Um, I, I might, I've accidentally deleted it. Just make sure we, we put it back so it links. So then we're going to add a path property to the remainder of our embedded JavaScript. And we're going to link our data.json file that is found in the JS file um, that we made, if you go back and look. And it's really, that's basically our animation, so we just link that back in. Um, so that's it. That's how what our HTML file is going to look like from now on. It looks so much better than we started. So the div tag is basically most of our J, um, HTML besides the whole document. And it's basically a com container where our animation is happening. So now if we go back to the CSS, we have the body tag, which is an HTML tag, right? And um, what it's what we have here is um, it's what's been stylized is basically the background color has been set to white, the margin, um, which is basically like a border is naught pixels, the height is 100% so it's responsive and full, the full length of the window, overflow is hidden so um, if there's anything that's uh, spreading over the uh, container it'll be hidden and you can't scroll. Then we have the body moving ID, um, it's shown by the hashtag and it's got the same ba background color, width and height 100% so it's also responsive, display block basically puts it in a block. Um, overflow hidden, so you can't, um, if there's anything that, again, spreads over the container, it's hidden, you can't carry on scrolling. Um, then you've got this transform property, which is pretty cool. It um, places it in a 3D space. Um, the next one is text align and a basic center, which basically puts it in the center. And then opacity one, which makes it opaque and not transparent. And that's pretty much it for CSS. So next we're going to look at our embedded JavaScript. And this is the only JavaScript you can edit. Um, so the first thing you got is um, var, which means variable. And this has the name of params. Um, and then it has an equal sign, which is an operator. And then the things in the um, curly brackets are the properties. So the first property is container, where the document um, has the function of get element I by ID, which, surprise, surprise, is our body moving. The next is renderer, which um, is set to SVG, which is a string, and um, that's our animation, it's what we export as, so it doesn't pixelate. The next is loop, and it's set to a boolean of true, and it can be also false, and it just means it will play over and over again. Um, autoplay um, plays as soon as the um, window opens, or, and you can set that to another boolean of true or false. Um, then you have the path, and which we linked ourselves. <laughs> 
next we're looking at the variable called anim. An anim has the operation operator that um, makes the body move in have the function of loading the animation params, which is above. So that's basically it. I just want to say thanks so much for watching this tutorial. I hope it clears up a lot of things about body moving, and I hope you get the confidence to give it a try because it's pretty cool.